This is Dave Jewett standing in for reviewer Brett Todd. Kingdom Come Deliverance ditches cliches of the Middle Ages in favour of a brutal portrayal that wastes no time proving how difficult life was in the early 15th century. Aspects of the game can be a little too unforgiving due to some overly exacting mechanics and a host of oversights that includes a torturous save system. But for its attention to detail and its adherence to an ambitious vision, Kingdom Come Deliverance is nonetheless a unique and memorable RPG. You play as Henry, the naive son of a blacksmith who has the misfortune of living in Scalet's Bohemia in 1403. When the countryside erupted with violence due to the imprisonment of the rightful King Wenceslas IV by his power-hungry brother Sigismund. After a pastoral medieval day of hitting on the local barmaid, playing pranks and helping dad finish a sword for the local lord, your village is attacked by an army without warning. All Henry can do is watch in terror before fleeing for his life a few steps in front of savage marauders. All of this adds up to a terrifying opening that serves as both a spectacular source of frustration, when you can expect to die many times before escaping Scalets, and as a warning that Kingdom Come Deliverance is not a typical fantasy RPG. There's no heroic swordplay here, no wizards casting fireballs, no clerics raising the dead, no orcs, no dragons. This is the story of an actual civil war that raged across Bohemia, and your part in it is that of a nobody struggling to survive in a land full of noblemen who couldn't care less if you live or died, and fellow peasants who would stab you in the back for a crust of bread. Such a cruel atmosphere is actually what makes Kingdom Come Deliverance so enthralling, supported by an incredible attention to detail. Built in CryEngine 3, the presentation brings the era to life. From the filth of muddy village streets, to idyllic sylvan forests where you can hunt wild boar or relax while sunbeams and butterflies sparkle around you. Voice acting and scripting is nicely evocative of the age, right down to the constant religious references that underline the importance of Christianity. God be with you, Kunesh. God save. Can I help you with anything? Jesus Christ be praised. The addition of modern swearing is anachronistic, as is the inclusion of accents from seemingly every corner around the globe. While this language creativity can be a little jarring, everything around it is so convincing that you quickly get used to it. Game mechanics further prop up the ambiance provided by look, sound and historical detail. Characters start work when the sun rises and head to bed when it sets. You must fit into this schedule, which also involves regular food and sleep to stay healthy and hearty. Time skips are possible, although even then you'll have to wait a minute or two while the hours slowly tick past on a clock screen. Looking after your clothing and taking semi-regular baths is also vital. Show up at a lord's manor house in rags, stinging of the stable? Well, good luck if you have to ask a favour. While an extensive statistic and skill system provides you with a tremendous number of ways to customise Henry as he explores 15th century Bohemia, he's only as good as his collective experiences. So if you want to get better at firing a bow, you need to practice the archery range or head into the forest and shoot wild game like rabbits. Dozens of selectable perks attached to the individual skill categories are also available allowing you to pick all sorts of personality traits that govern everything from how much beer you can drink to how well you can stay on a horse. There are no shortage of options when it comes to turning Henry into a wannabe noble and scholar, or a thug and a thief. Combat also runs true to the focus on realism. Instead of instantly turning into a warrior when you whip out your sword for the first time, Henry is a klutz at the start, and he sadly doesn't get all that much better with experience. Ranged battles are similarly tough, due to a lack of any sort of targeting reticle for your bow. Increasing stats and skills allow your combat abilities to gradually improve over time, but it doesn't seem that you can get anywhere close to the effortless abilities typically displayed in RPGs. Other actions such as riding a horse and picking locks can also be overly finicky. Yet as much as such activities can result in frustration, especially in earlier parts of the game, the rigorous control scheme underlines the central theme that adventuring is not supposed to be easy for a village peasant with no experience of the wider world. Every battle in the game is nerve-wracking. Taking on more than one opponent is incredibly risky, and engaging with three or more is simply futile. The game features a thorough suite of medieval armour and clothing options ranging from padded shirts to full plate. Putting on a full plate helmet means that you'll see the world through a slit, Battling foes in armour also presents its own challenges. Take on a fully equipped enemy and you need to either target the openings with arrows or switch to blunt weapons better at bashing armoured extremities. <laughs> Despite these complexities, it's disappointing that combat lacks physicality. It's clumsy enough that you never feel completely in control, and there are odd hesitations in the animation that sort of remove you from the immediacy of battles. That said, you're generally so grateful just to survive that you don't care how good the victory looked. 
Even though Kingdom Come Deliverance is built similarly to the standard RPG like Skyrim, where you accept quests and follow map icons to their destinations, there are some key differences. The biggest is the way that adventures are built around the living world, so if you're told to meet a nobleman at dawn, you'd better do it or he may well take off without you. This benefits your immersion, but it can make for a lot of dicey moments. Kingdom Come feels like a balancing act where everything could spin out of control at any moment if you miss a scheduled appointment to start a quest, or even worse, encounter a bug. Bugs sometimes prevent characters from appearing when they should, making you revisit locations to trigger quests, or revisiting old saves to get things back on track. But being able to save your location anywhere, anytime would have helped a lot with the above problems. Sadly, the save system is one of the worst ever featured in an RPG. Progress is saved automatically after you sleep and at certain moments of play. But you can't just sleep anywhere, and saves aren't triggered regularly enough during quests. Some multi-part quests do not save for an hour or more, forcing you to backtrack for lengthy periods of time if you get killed. And since you can get killed so easily here, this is a constant risk. You can save manually with the use of save your schnapps, but this concoction has to be purchased at high cost, which is tough to manage in the early game, or brewed. Basically, the game needs a patch and a fresh look at some design elements to let better quality shine. Even with its issues in mind, anyone who can appreciate the down and dirty nature of history should experience Kingdom Come Deliverance. It's an impressive and unflinching look at the medieval era that tells the compelling story of a real person caught in the middle of a civil war. There are trade-offs here that make for an inconsistent experience, shoving you away with quirks, bugs and a frustrating save system, although it's still a unique and captivating experience quite unlike most RPGs, and can be easily recommended for that alone. Such miserable luck, to die by the sword you helped forge.